Hey, Sean. It's been a couple weeks and so my studio setup has changed and so it's time to make another video of my home studio. And before I just show you what my setup is this time, I kind of wanted to walk through what the obstacles are that I deal with with my home studio because maybe there's something like yours and you can see the lengths that I've gone to and, and the, the things I've come up with to address some of those problems and maybe they'll work for you too. First off, my, my office, my studio, isn't just my office and my studio. It's a room that has my desk in the corner, but it also has our couch, which can pull out into a, a sofa, this be, or into a bed. This becomes our guest bedroom um, if it's not COVID. Our TV is in here, and so if we're going to watch TV, we only have one TV in our house. It's this one. So if we're going to watch anything, I can't leave stuff set up. I can't just have this room always be the studio with gear and tripods and C-stands and all this stuff. So... On one hand, it's kind of an annoyance because it puts an obstacle between me and creating. Because if I have an idea, it's like, well, I gotta get everything out, I gotta bring the, the stands up from the basement, set everything up, and record. Which is why I often batch record. I set things up, I record a few videos, then I break it down and, and take a break for a couple weeks and write things. But the convenience to that, or the benefit, is I get to change my setup each time and try different things, experiment with different things, edit it, go back and look at the footage and say, you know, that didn't sound quite like I wanted to do. That didn't look quite how I wanted it to. And and this iteration allows me to keep improving um, and it gives me an excuse to make more of these YouTube studio videos. But my, my setup is pretty simple right now and I, I've come to like this for the past couple months. But I just added, the most recent thing is I have a sound blanket now. My room is a hardwood floor. I have a rug in here, a couch, and one curtain. And these sound panels behind my computer, I found don't really do anything. Uh, if I'm recording anything on my computer, it sounds awful, just high resonance. Uh, if you watch the YouTube stream I did this past week, uh, it's just, it sounds awful. And that's talking into those sound panels. So maybe Amazon foam sound panels aren't the best solution for something like that. Uh, who knew? So I got a sound blanket, a legit sound blanket from, I think, vocalboothtogo.com uh, or something. I'll put the link in the description. Um, but this was the one that Gerald Undone recommends. And it's a real sound blanket. And I've had loading blankets in the past, and I finally upgraded. And it was more expensive, but night and day, what it sounds like in here with this blanket. And it's not even like all around. I just have one up. I bought two, but I only have one up. It's just to my right here. I, I'm, I'm touching it now. Um, but so... A lot of the room is still exposed, but just having this in here and up absorbs a ton of the reverb, and I love the difference that makes. For a light, I have my Hudson Spider Mosey, which I will admit to you, as I do every time, this light is absolutely overkill. This is what I use in my actual production for lighting interviews. It is a flexible, amazing, wonderful light, which if you've seen any of my videos recently, you've heard me talk about. It's, it's like $3,500 for this light, and so I don't recommend it for your YouTube studio. But for me, it's really nice. Right now, it's on in parabolic mode, meaning the arms are bent toward me a little bit, which gives super soft shadows, but it means there's no diffusion. There's no big soft box. There's no two feet of separation between the source and the front of the diffusion. It's a really lean setup. It's just on one stand, um, and it offers great light. And because of its shape, it lights me decently, but it also kicks some decent light around the room and bounces around uh, in, in a happy way for me. So that's my light. For my camera, my Sony a7S III, I'm using a small HD Focus 7 monitor so that I can see myself. If I'm ever not making eye contact with you, it's because I'm checking whether I'm in frame and in focus. And for the most part, the Sony a7S III does a great job of keeping me in focus. For audio, aside from the sound blanket, I'm using my Deity VMic D3 Pro running straight into the camera. And I really like this microphone. Um, I've used it for a long time and turns out this sound blanket goes a long way to fixing some of the issues it has as any shotgun microphone would in a small echoey space like this. And lastly, we've got my key light, but I have two Aperture ALMCs in the back that are just battery powered lights, which I bought and didn't use a lot at first. And I'm finding in production, they're a really handy way to just add a little something. And I've had other tiny portable lights from Aperture in the past, and I just never used them. And I was sort of rolling my eyes after I bought these, like, what did I just waste money on? And I hate, I hate how Aperture packages these small lights because there's so much waste in them. Like, they each have a canvas carrying case that comes with it. I don't know anyone who's going to put these things in a canvas, separate canvas carrying cases for each one that hold USB charging cables. Yeah. 
But in spite of that, I have them. Uh, and so I started using them. They have magnets on the back of them. And so I can stick them to stands and stuff like that. And it makes a quick difference. Here, let me take a pink one and I will stick it to my microphone C stand. And just like that, well, it's shining a bit on me, but I can have a pink accent on the wall pretty easily. Um, and I can change whatever color that is. So, so they're handy little lights. And I think it's gone a little way to just making the video slightly more interesting to look at rather than just an all beige wall behind me. So this is the studio as we're working with it today. If you've got any questions or suggestions, throw them in the comments um, because I'm always trying to make this thing better. Thank you for watching. I sincerely appreciate you making it this far. See you later. Bye.